we're both a little bit anxious and scared about 2024. Very anxious and scared, actually. In fact, we talked about it last night. I'm surprised to hear that she's feeling the same anxiety that I have. And we talked about why we didn't feel that when we were younger in the past, what has it been, four times that we've switched countries previously. We just did it. We just ripped the bandage off every time, even with a child in tow twice. Idiots. I mean, I'm not saying that what we did was stupid. It worked out. But it was, boy, it was dangerous. But was it really? That's a relative thing. Coming to America was, coming to America was risky. The sec, this last time. That was the dangerous one. Man, that's why I'm so scared to go back again. Because <coughs> I figured it out. The reason that I'm so I'm so anxious about going back now is because of the hindsight that I have now about the risk of coming to America in 2014. 2013-14, it was a 14-month affair. That was a ginormous. I mean, I mean, I should have been fired from my job. I really didn't know what I was doing when I came back. I kind of I kind of talked my way into getting a job as a business systems analyst too. I wasn't a project manager then. I didn't even know what a business systems analyst really did. I'd never been one. I had worked in IT. I was qualified to that extent. And I had met the criteria that had been laid out for me for the job. And I had passed the interviews. So I guess I could say that I, I did it that way. But I remember that. I remember about, it was about two or three months in, I was fired from my first project, so to speak. Not fired from my job, but fired from my first project. Uh, I, I was trusted that I could knew what I was doing. And I, and I very quickly demonstrated that I didn't. It, it, was a, it, was a, it really was a project. It was, I was hired as an analyst, but, and I really never, never really did much analyst work. Um, I do more analyst work now than ever before, and I really like it, and I've, I think I've gotten good at it. I, I, certainly, I certainly now understand the distinction, and I can certainly now do the BSA work, and I can do the project management work, but it took me a decade to get here, and I really wasn't even proficient at it until about three years in. So for about that first three years, um, especially that first year, I was a probationary employee, right? I wasn't, I couldn't be let go at a, I was at will, so to speak. Uh, you know, I, I know most employees are at will, but in my work, that's, you kind of get a tenure of sort after a year. They can still fire you, but it's harder. That was a huge wake up for me. <clears throat> it was about, I think I said, like I said, it was like two months in, a little maybe around right around there. I remember going to that meeting with the stakeholder, the sponsor, sorry. Who, who might actually see this video? That person. Hi. Thank you for not firing me. <laughs> that person is now among my social, my social uh, connections. Gratefully so. I, I do appreciate that person for not for for many reasons. And that person wasn't the one that would probably fire have fired me. It was another. It was someone else. Gave me another chance. And boy, did I latch onto it. I realized, I realized the close call that I had. And it disappeared. I, I went below the surface for about I don't know, three to five years. I mean, I would go out into the desert to poke around like I started to do. This is long before going alone. But my was serious. That was a close call that person that I'm referring to and I and I would not have and I would not have held it against that person had they fired me I would have probably in hindsight even to this day thought yeah you did the right thing that was I wasn't qualified but when I as soon as I realized how close how close the close call I'd have with that I, I like I said I went underwater so to speak at work 
and I made myself qualified. I did everything I could. I climbed, I climbed the mountain to, to, to save myself from, from that risk. And um, I remember, I don't think I've ever told this anyway. I've said this on um, any videos or social media. When the one-year probationary period was up, um, I came back that day, and it was a big day for me because they've been on my mind. And by the way, just to let you know, that person, a particular person, um, is not afraid to fire people. And like I said, I, I respect that choice. They're, that person is from an environment, the same environment that I was from, where excellence is demanded. And incompetence and uh, anything less than ambition is not tolerated. That's the world I come from. My problem was that I didn't have the skills. That was my problem. I had to climb it. And I think they saw that I was trying because I really was trying. And at the end of that year, the day, the anniversary of my hire, which would have been, which would have been, uh, February 23rd, 2020, sorry, 2015, February 23rd, 2015, I came back to my desk after lunch, came to my little cube, I remember that cube back by the door, I got to get a gulp remembering this. I was so scared. I'm not telling you why I was so scared. I was uh, why I was so scared. Getting fired would have been a huge, big deal at that point. My family was back in Japan, um, relying on my income for their support. We didn't have savings. We'd burned through it all trying to make. Well, first of all, I'd burned through everything, losing everything in the in the, in the great collapse of 2008. You'd think, oh yeah, Kurt, you have plenty of time to recover. Now I, I never really recovered. Um, we lost everything. I had, my, I had a wife and a daughter, and daughter and going to an expensive private school in, in Japan, and my wife working a job, but not certainly not able enough to support support the family. Um, she was working at that point. If I had been fired, we didn't have anything to fall back on. What the hell would have happened? I mean, okay, we probably we would have made it. We wouldn't have starved on the streets. Nico and I are both ambitious people, but um, I, I, I get just goosebumps just remembering that, the fear. So I came back from my desk, I get to my desk after lunch, <clears throat> step to the computer, and right there on the thing on front of my keyboard was a pink piece of paper, pink slip. It was, it was the last day. It was the day before, actually. I think it was, or maybe it was that day. It was the last day I could be fired for cause, right, without fired for will, right? And uh, it was that person. I opened it. And it was, it said, congratulations, you made, you made the year. It was from that person. Congratulations, you made the year. And just as that person would do, I wouldn't expect anything of it. I was then told, now you're subject to other means and mechanism, you know, basically telling me that the threat of being fired had been hanging over my head the whole time. Now you're subject to other mechanisms of, of, of discipline and uh, correction. Be prepared, in so many words. And I was grateful. Mm. Gulp. Grateful that I'd made the year. And grateful that I was still to be held to account, because that's and I was I'm never I've never in my whole career ever been one that could ride on my rest or or lazy. I am not anybody that's ever worked with me knows that I'm I, am, I'm, I drive myself harder than any any boss could ever drive me, and I continue that way to this day. Even though I'm down to as of tomorrow it'll be a year, yeah, one year out before I'm finished with work. What an interesting thing to have this conversation at this mark. But I made it. I made it that year, and I resolved that I was going to get myself, keep my keep going the way, and become the best, be it business systems analyst slash project manager that I could be. And I've kept driving at that for the last nine years ever since. And I'm at the top of my game now. And it's a funny thing. I feel sometimes like like it's a strange thing to 
and then be thinking about retiring when I finally got this figured out. And I, I get I get inquiries from uh, for, for, to apply for jobs um, um, frequently, so headhunters, etc. Um, maybe I'll maybe I'll keep it up in some capacity after I go back to Japan, do it a consultant work or something like that. It would be a shame to let these skills. Um, you know, go go. I, it would be nice to keep my resume current. You know, not that I I, I want to work anymore, but it would be nice to. I'm a bit scared, and it would be nice to keep keep my capabilities up. It's like 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 if I ever, <clears throat> if we ever, like when we go back to Japan, we're going to make sure that Yumiko's green card doesn't expire, because every time we've made this big transition, we've always let our certifications, our our green cards, our our permanent resident, I mean our residency cards, our driver's license, we just let all that expire and start over again. Not anymore. We'll go back this time. We'll keep Yumiko's, we'll do whatever it takes to keep Yumiko's green card current, uh, keep our driver's license current, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> not gonna not gonna let all that stuff lapse again. Let's wrap this up. So the reason that I'm so scared right now of 2024, now that I, now that I've had this talk with myself, is because I remember so well how frightened I was in 2014 and 15 and 16 and 17. And maybe it was about 2018 that I finally started to loosen up from that, the experience of bringing my family across this last time. Which is a strange, funny thing because the risk is largely gone. Right, I mean, I don't have a child to support anymore. Emily's gonna have her degree, and she'll have her job and her own life. You make, I don't have to worry about sustenance anymore. You make, and I will have our retirement income and pension and our savings. We're safe, so to speak. I mean, I do have to worry about you know health, etc., and mental well-being, etc. Yeah, I am worried about that too. Right, I'm worried about what I'm gonna. I'm worried about what I'm going to do with free time. Genuinely concerned. I don't know that I... I've, I've tried this once before. I took a year off from work once before and uh, failed at it utterly. Led to a, a deep depression. I was not... I just... I learned that I was not prepared for not having work. Work sustains me. It's what I do. It's what I am. I hate it. I hate... Just, I hate that that's the fact. that Yesterday I was mulling around and it was like... Like, God, I can't believe I've spent 40 years of my life, 39 if I take that one year I took off, 40 years of my life, you know, at, at the coal face. You know, just now I'm, I'm going to be free and my health is probably going to begin to fail. What a waste. It's, it's, it's the way, it's the paradigm that I've, I was born into. So anyway, a lot of there, all kinds of stuff. I think I, now I understand why I'm afraid of 2024, even if it's more irrational. We'll just let that sit right there. Yesterday was a day of thinking about those thoughts and walking with Yumiko and talking with her about them as well. She's feeling the same way, and she told me that, that we, we didn't feel that way previously because we were too too ignorant and stupid to realize how <laughs> the risk we were taking. And uh, now we are. Now we know better, and she's nervous too. So we'll, but we'll make it. It's It's a one-way street, in fact. The only alternative is to, to stay here. And stay here isn't isn't what either of us want to do. Besides, our daughter leaving. She's going back there anyway, so we're going to go too. You're going too, dogs. 